Hi and welcome to this episode of Linux in Schools. This is 15 things that a teacher should be doing after they have installed their Ubuntu Groovy Gorilla. Now, I'm here in my fresh Ubuntu. Um, I've changed my background once. So I had the Gorilla and I changed it to colorful pencils. So let's see, um, what do we need to do? How can we make Ubuntu to work for us a little better? And I wrote a blog post in my nickelumen.com blog. And so let's go and see 15 things. What should you do? Now, I included also a few thoughts of why schools should use open source software. Um, also, my current school, we have six principles of learning, going for authenticity, creativity, independence and interaction, challenge, inclusivity and reflection. And so when I'm thinking about why should I use open source software, these are the values that I uh, use to assess every single decision that I do. But I also use the technology integration matrix. So the five categories that um, I should be focusing on are active, collaborative, constructive, authentic, and goal-directed learning. And for me, open source software gives me the, the tools to do these things. Uh, but the main three connections that I make are equity, the values, and localization. Now, for equity, it is that when I use open source software, I use usually tools that are published on all three major platforms. So on Windows, on Mac OS and on Linux. And because they mostly are free to use software, I can download and distribute, the students can download and distribute these apps, this software on their home desktops, their own laptops. And so I'm not putting anyone into any position where finances or access to hardware is going to make a huge difference. The second thing is values. The open source is based on sharing the knowledge, working together, openness, transparency, the free access to information. And this is really um, inclusivity. This is independence and interaction. This is creativity. This is collaborative and constructive learning. All together that is in the core heart of the beliefs of open source software. And then my third localization. Now this might feel a little odd, but let me explain. You are allowed to use with open source software, you can participate into an authentic program, you put a project, you can collaborate, contribute, participate. Um, students can use their really their communication skills to collaborate. They can sell, use their self-management skills to organize these collaborations. They use their social skills and their thinking skills. And what if there is a software that is not published in their native language? They can actually contribute code or contribute localization files to that project and thus getting an, um, a real life experience of what it is to be part of a project that is actually producing something real. So that gives us the localizations. But now let's go into setting up your computer. So what you need to do is always find out what is new. Um, I've uh, put in some really great links from um, OMG Ubuntu website. Um, what are the new features? And also you need to understand that once you install it, you are the system administrator and then you can create a standard user. But as a sy system administrator, you have the super user power. And with super user power, you're going to be able to do this. And you don't have to use the terminal. You do not have to. However, it is here. 
we can go in and put in terminal and most of my instructions right now are for terminal now what you can do is that you can control C control copy or copy and then we can put this one here always on top so we don't lose it uh, with the mouse scroll click we can paste and then we just say our magic password so now what I'm doing I'm doing an update and an upgrade right off the bat on oh that was a lot so while that is going there I do this every single time before I start doing anything else so that I know that my system is up to date it is ready it is configured and I am ready to start uh, working on other things now my next part and while and this is the great thing about Linux I can already start without any problems I can already start looking at what is the next thing now Ubuntu as a desktop is using underneath GNOME desktop and it has quite great great functionality already but it lacks some of the things that I find really useful so what I like to do is that I like to use those uh, some gnome extensions now the gnome extensions are tools that I really enjoy because there are some really um, subtle but they're enhancements so I can be um, picking up my microphone I have two microphones which one do I want to use the extension is going to give me that I have dual screens multi monitor support comes through those enhancements um, having desktop icons which I really don't know why we didn't have those before um, that support also comes through those extensions and this happens so that um, you usually use it through your favorite browser but before you can do that you need to add that support in your system and that comes through another set of code that we can copy paste into our terminal once this terminal has um, finished its unpacking and installation of the upgrades that we're doing which is as we can see here on the progress bar right now showing that we are already at almost 40 percent now also what it is doing right now it is bringing on the LibreOffice 7.1 the brand new version of LibreOffice that was published today or is it well let's see so that was um, that was um, a big news that the new LibreOffice is in so while we wait for um, that to finish let me introduce the other parts because they're not necessarily something um, that uh, we need to do as we go uh, media codecs now if you didn't opt for installing those third-party sources during installations um, which I do recommend you do if you watch my previous videos about this you'll notice that that is the way to go and then you don't have to do that here but if you didn't do it it is as quick as doing that sudo apt install ubuntu restricted extras and that will give you um, the popular music and video formats um, in your use as you want to go the next thing that I really like to do is installing those GNOME tweaks. So this is a graphical tool that gives you uh, more control over fonts, over uh, some um, themes that you can use on the desktop. I really don't use that, but it gives me then the tool for those extensions. So I can enable or disable the extensions regarding of what my needs are and that's sometimes sometimes that is really really 
useful. I also like to do is to um, choose my default applications um, and those comes from selecting settings and for settings we can go over to the right hand corner and click on settings and that gives us um, access to settings so now here we are it automatically goes to background but I want to see my default applications and by pressing default applications right here now I see that my web browser is Firefox and even if I'm pressing here the arrow it's not giving me any other option I go for mail Thunderbird mail the same thing my calendar is a text editor right now my music is a rhythm box videos and then image for you oh I have some options here that I can choose from but nothing that I would be able to use um, extensively yet so those are the default applications the next thing that I can do is to look at if I need a graphics driver so if you're using something like Nvidia you might want to enable the Nvidia graphics drivers um, you don't have to but it might improve your system speed so and that happens through about software updates and when you click on software updates and now my system is going to be a bit laggy here it, we get it up here so the first thing is that it shows us downloadable from the internet yep we got all the Ubuntu software other software if we want to install Skype we want to put the canonical partners here it's going to ask for that super user password for that so if other people are trying to do that they cannot if they are standard users updates authentication trusted software providers we can add we can add here later on and then additional drivers now searching for available drivers says no proprietary drivers are in use now my system does not need this so I do not expect to see any yep no additional drivers available so I can close that up it says that the information about the available software is out of date so I will need to do that but I do not want to reload while my terminal is doing its thing so I'm just gonna click close right now and once I get this one done I'm gonna run that update script again just to be safe and get all those new programs also as part of my repertoire okay we're at already at 95 percent and that is now going to stall for a little bit because it's going to um, update my boot where I can then choose a new uh, version of the kernel or I have then the new version of the kernel in my use so that my computer has got all the security and uh, other patches and it's then ready to be used as well as it can be now if you are using a laptop then you also want to install laptop tools this allows then you to monitor your different types like battery uh, fan speeds and etc that things that will make your battery last longer and you can get more out of your laptop now updates are done I'm just going to do an update here so that it's going to add those partners in and packages are up to date so now we can go in and go start with that gnome shell so copy and again um, when we're here we don't need that dollar sign we just want that sudo gnome shell and pressing the wheel pastes it in 
So now we got the GNOME shell and if I go with my browser to extensions.gnome.org now I have the shell extensions in my use. If I need a browser extension, luckily it's being provided right there. And now I am able to look at what do I have, what are installed. So I have desktop icons, Ubuntu app indicators and Ubuntu doc as placeholders. Now, my favorite things that I like to do are the desk top icons ng the ding and this is by far the way better it's going to say install extension yes install and now it's on and I have new functionality on my desktop another extension that I really like is of course that sound input output device ch chooser I click on do you want to install the extension install yes please and now when I go up here I have more usability already on my menu system now let's get me back here on so media codex I have because I already used it um, the tweak tool again we do not need the dollar sign we just want to grab the tweak tool and once it's installed I can just either click the show applications here on the sidebar and find where do I have tweak not visible right away so I need to type it in tweaks and tweaks again as I said it gives me these extensions that I want to be using it gives me appearance for using the themes I can look at my windows my fonts and etc so those are the system things that I need now for software I definitely want to install Chrome and Chrome is as easy as typing Chrome install I agree even though I don't read that but I mean Oh, I did not get that as my first choice. Let's see. Hey, Google. Let's see. Download. Let's do that. Get Chrome for Linux for Debian Ubuntu. Uh, it Debian Ubuntu. It has. Um, recognize where we are said accept and install now what is going to do it's going to you have chosen to open google chrome stable current amd 64.deb now the dot deb is in uh, important that means that it's a debian package and that means that yes you can install that on ubuntu system because ubuntu is based on debian now I'm going to say open with software install that is the default and that opens the software store right away oh failed to install wrong choice I need to download it again and this time I'm going to save the file so that was actually something that happened during the download and because I still want to use a graphical um, installer 
I'm going to install GDB, which is going to give me an installation, um, a graphical installation tool to install those um, De Debian packages. Now, this is really the rare case. We usually do not install anything, anything out from our software center. We always want to use the software center. Google is go being Google and it has not uh, opened Chrome. It um, actually has a free and open source software uh, part, uh, project called Chromium. That is the open source version. But I know that most teachers, you are either a G Suite or a Google Workspaces school. So you need to use Chrome. And also that allows you to use the same extensions then for your Chrome as you use, um, you know, on any other device that you, if you're even, if you're on a Mac, if you're on a Windows, or if you are on a Linux system. So again, that is something that um, I know that you guys want to be doing. Now, everything else we have here on our system, we do have them in our software um, center. So VLC, which is a, a wonderful video um, player we want to install because that is the ultimate media player. It's going to ask for my password. And the reason why I don't always use the software center is because I already know this. I pretty much know which piece of software I want. I don't need to be well, going and search for it. Um, and so therefore it's kind of like, well, how do I, um, it's convenient for me to use the command line, the terminal, because I know uh, it is faster and I, it gives me a visual feedback right away of what is happening. And so I just, I just feel that it is something that I like to do uh, a bit more. Um, and I feel that I have more, um, more control over. Now, something that I do feel that it's, it's nice and, um, and things to use the graphical user face for is when I am um, installing like uh, the Debian packages that if I've uh, brought them over from somewhere that they're not in a repository um, for Ubuntu. So that's kind of like the rare moment when I do uh, jump over and, and look at uh, other things. Now, it says that it's one installed and to be honest, I it's been such a such a long long time. Well, be like, I really wonder when it has been the last time when I used the software center. Um, one package that I really think. Ooh, One package that I do like um, is the GS Connect, but which I can't be. Uh, did I? There's the Snap Store, Groovy Universe. Ah. This must be the demo effect. So my Installation is hanging on here for 99%. No, okay, we're getting somewhere. Let me now try then. See, we have downloaded our Google Chrome stable. It's going to the package installer that I just installed it is going to check that it's going to it, that it's all okay. 
it gives us the details included files and I can say install so again my password and it's going to do the installation now we can look into what is happening so this is the, the reason why I like terminal is that I can see what is happening so it's reading database preparing to unpack unpacking setting up and updating processing triggers so that it goes into a menu and installation complete okay we can close it we can close it and we can then hopefully find it right clicking it i can add it to favorites and now if i go it should be here i can move my browsers being on top of each other and this is the by the way if i don't want the writer to be here i can remove it i can remove from favorites and i can just make sure that i have just the pro uh, apps there that I want. So there are VLC, GIMP editing software, um, often compared to Photoshop. This is a list, by the way, um, from TechMint. Um, Spotify, Skype, Viber, Calibre, Ebook Management Tool, Dropbox, uh, and Atom all different types but then let's do what is really what we're after which is the educational software or and the emphasis on producing content for remote learning as we are currently unfortunately all of us doing and so let's see what we need to do here so number one thing what you want to do is to set up your online account so if you are Google Workspace school you want to connect to your, uh, to your school account so then when you are going to be synchronizing your calendar that comes directly here all the notifications all the emails come directly within the system so you can do that so online accounts definitely a go for me then content creator you want to if you have an older laptop that you're going to be using you want to install simple screen recorder but if you are going to go with content creation and be serious about it you want to install OBS studio after that you want to put an open shot or shortcut both of them are great non-linear video editors but if you have a powerful AMD system with ample of RAM you then you can install the non-free DaVinci Resolve or Lightworks so these are both professional level um, video editors that you can use in Linux and then you to record edit and manipulate audio for your podcast you want to install audacity now audacity is um, really multi-platform um, tool that is I would like to say it's something that um, everyone all students definitely uh, need to have um, an experience of how to use audacity um, it's a multi-track system you can uh, compress combine you can um, do everything noise reduction amplification uh, normalize it the works it works in audacity um, and then finally oh no not that if you're blogging like I'm blogging on WordPress then you can do a WordPress desktop client and so you can kind of do that as your work and then you can use uh, browsers or something else but of course you can uh, edit your uh, blogs through that um, browser window as well and finally what 
is computer and learning without games. It's boring. That's what it is. And that's the same thing what I would say. So um, for games, if you're a Minecrafter, if you use Minecraft at work, you want to install multi MC5 allows you to have your different um, different profiles. You can use the different uh, versions you can have fabric or you can uh, create uh, you can have um, optifine and it will uh, you can play um, with different profiles and you do not break your minecraft installations now uh, minecraft bedrock client is also ported for linux you can use that and play the windows 10 version and connect to realms and play with others from your desktop um, Steam, you can get your Steam games, you can, uh, you can get your uh, different kinds of games online and you can have them here. Um, and of course, Lutris, Lutris is another uh, emulator that emulates a Windows uh, environment. So you can also try out if your Windows based games work here on Linux. Now this is a very rudimentary website um, it does not give you step-by-step um, -step instructions if you are after step-by-step -step instructions click on any of these links to go into a way more detailed and prettier way of what to do after you have installed Linux now if you like these kind of uh, videos if you think that this is helping you getting into Linux and use that in your education please like subscribe leave a comment follow me on my social media I'm on Instagram I'm on Twitter PYP with Nico and Nico Luman at Instagram um, as I said follow like comment when you're commenting when you're clicking clicking that like button when, when you're commenting you're making youtube think that this type of content needs to be shared to more people and that really helps out 